Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk and welcome to Pseudoscientist number two. I have no idea where these glasses came from, they just appeared. So today we're going to be covering someone who I've only actually covered twice on this channel, yet you all know him. I am of course talking about our feathered friend, no, not Big Bird, I'm talking about Roger. Mud Fossil University. A lot of people thought that the second video in the series was about Roger, but no, that was actually about Tyson, who's basically Roger without a feather. Anyway, today we're going to be taking a look at Roger responding to Cyman Dan. And hey, that's actually kind of like what Jake did. Okay, I'm, I'm really hoping I can work with this guy, Cyman Dan, because he's, you know, he's got his way. I mean, he's arrogant and he's, I don't think he's competent, but that, that's okay. <laughs> Now, I know Simon Dan, not in person of course, but he doesn't really seem like an arrogant person to me. As for confidence, well, he's certainly gotten more confident over the years, and I think that's just a result of doing it for a long time. And you can tell the video that Roger is looking at is from a long time ago, because it's Simon Dan's old background, not his new one. Okay, my friends, listen to this attack by Simon Dan against Roger. Here he goes. Roger, why are you speaking in third person there? It does seem a little bit odd to Planet Walk. Also, Simon Dan isn't really attacking you. He's taking something that you've said and pointing out why it's wrong. That's what Simon Dan does. One of the most bizarre theories out there is that planet Earth was once populated by a race of giants. Giant people, giant creatures, the stuff of grim fairy tales. The theory has many followers, not least a YouTube channel with almost 100,000 subscribers. 167,000 now, my friend. It's terrifying to think that over 167,000 people subscribe to you. And these people are probably adults. That's even scarier. It's just like when I see a Flat Earth channel that has over 100,000 subscribers. It's terrifying to think that there are that many idiots out there. We're going to be taking a look at the evidence that these giants were not only on the earth, but also inside it. You really do need face palm protection for this one, folks. Roll the tape, but I do warn, proceed with caution. Yep, you're not kidding, buddy. <laughs> Wait, why did him laughing cause the camera to shake? It was steady and then it shook because he laughed. <laughs> that makes no sense to me. Because the average mind can't handle it. His mind is is literally totally broken. I mean, this, he's in what we call menticide. Roger, have you ever thought that maybe, just maybe, it's not everyone else who's crazy, but it's you? Menticide means you're working for somebody else against yourself, not understanding you're working for the other guy. I'm pretty sure when Simon Dan works for me, he's not working against himself. I don't know where you got that from. We do pay him very well though, so even if he was working against himself, it would be worth it. Which is academia. He may be in academia, I don't know. I. Well, I do know that Simon Dan has done teaching before. I don't know what level it was at, but that's one of the reasons why he started his YouTube channel, I believe. Academia won't respond because they're smarter than he is because they know they're trapped. Roger, I'm going to put it bluntly. The reason why they're not responding to you is because you're batshit crazy. They have better things to do with their time than respond to someone who doesn't understand what they're talking about. But you know, here's an idea for you, Roger. If you really want to get academia's attention, why not try to publish an article in a peer-reviewed journal? Yes, it will most likely get rejected, but they'll probably be able to tell you what exactly is wrong with your ideas. And he's trapped because he can't possibly counter the evidence that I have. I've seen evidence from you before, and I've got to tell you, it's not that great, mate. So I would love to to respond with Simon Dan. I'd love to to because then we could get this stuff out there. I need somebody to talk to about it that that will discuss it. The way that he said that actually kind of makes me feel a little bit sorry for him. Makes him sound a little bit like he's lonely and just wants someone to talk to. Except when he talks about his crazy ideas people then start backing off. Roger, how about you start making some friends? Maybe go down to the pub and start making some friends there. Don't mention the mud fossil stuff though. You know, Simon there, he's, he, he's just disingenuous. I have DNA tests, I have three different DNA tests from three different specimens I sent in long ago. And they were all, and this was a very, very costly and complicated test and all three of them came back positive. Well for the first test you showed it came back as positive but for the other two tests you showed one of them came back as negative. 
dense, excellent quality DNA, because I took it right out of the arteries. You know, excellent quality DNA. And My question would be, why is it excellent quality DNA? Could it be that it's excellent quality DNA because it was contaminated? Homo sapien mitochondrial B in D loop. So I think this is pretty significant evidence. Uh, and let me show you the specimen. Okay, two things. First is keep in mind that the sequence match was with Homo sapiens, nothing else. The second is that Roger actually lets people take a look at this. And I did notice something after going through it. Right down at the bottom here, it says, these results were verified by Tom Pr Tom Pr Tom Pr They were verified by Tom. Now you might be asking, well, who the bloody hell is Tom? And we can go to Helix Biolabs websites to find out. So it says Tom is an experienced PhD level scientist with expertise encompassing the disciplines of microbiology, molecular biology, and biochemistry. You know, the kind of things that you would want, right? He is also the laboratory director, okay? Good stuff. Why is this important? Well, have you heard of Sasquatch? Turns out that there's a whole lot of funny people out there that think that Sasquatch is real and they're trying to find evidence of Sasquatch. In fact, there is a poorly designed website out there called the Sasquatch Genome Project. Very interesting. And I must say, this guy does not look real. He looks like a cartoon character. What is this? Anyway, we get down to here and who might it be but our good friend Tom. And his description even says, Tom has long had an interest in cryptozoology and has been intrigued by the possibility that creatures long described in myth and legend may in reality actually exist. Furthermore, it goes on to state that Tom is currently laboratory director at Helix Biological Laboratory, a biological testing firm he established in 2009. So it's definitely the same person then. Now you might say, well that's just one site, doesn't really mean anything. Is it though? Or is there sites like sasquatchresearchers.org which talk about Tom? Yes, it's in the Sasquatch Reports Index. <laughs> so I'm guessing that the reason why Roger went with that particular lab is because he had a shared interest with the person running it. That doesn't completely invalidate the report, but it does make it so much funnier. Okay, Simon, who's got the biggest? This is a fingertip. <laughs> That's a fingertip very good size. It's almost three feet long or approximately from front to back. So you think that that is a fingertip that has a length that is more than half my height. If that were a giant, you would expect this giant to be over 150 meters tall. I don't think Roger realizes how impossibly large that is for a human-like creature. And you can see it. I'm going to erase my little things because Dan has such a hard time seeing things. I figured I would highlight it. I know most people won't have a hard time, but I'm sure Dan would. Now, that's the fingertip. No, just not seeing it. Roger does realize that just because you draw a line on something, it doesn't mean that it is what you say it is, right? No, this was DNA tested. I broke this piece off up here so I could get blood down deep inside. So you're telling me that this massive creature had DNA that could be identified as Homo sapien DNA. Let me show you what happened when I took that off. It's fingerprints. Okay, so here's some more of my evidence. This is fingerprints, and these are sweat pores. Okay, so if this thing had Homo sapien DNA, I hate to break it to you, but Things don't scale exactly like that. If you wanted to try and scale humans to, let's say, twice the size that we are, there would be so many things that you would need to change. If you tried to use very similar DNA, then we would die pretty quickly. This is another one. And that, you t put your left hand back out and you're gonna have one of these running right down there. You're gonna have a cleave right in between the two pads of your hand. The little finger runs off this way. You see it built up there from the pad and the, the thumb runs off in that direction. So normally in situations like this, I'd say, you know, that's pareidolia, but I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing how he's seeing the things that he is. It's like he has some kind of extreme pareidolia to the point where you can't even classify it as pareidolia anymore. And I have fingertips, I have, and this was DNA tested and, uh, it's a human too. 
the mitochondrial side. I don't think Roger understands that there is a limit on how big humans can get with the DNA that we have. That is why I think that the DNA samples that he gave were just simply contaminated. And this was the lung I had tested as well. This one right here. This one I didn't bother. I mean, it's so saturated with blood. Blood ran right out of this thing. You see the blood here? That's what came out of that other one. Roger, did you consider the possibility that it might be water with other stuff in it which gave it a different colour? That is what I would assume rather than going, oh, it's clearly a mud fossil then. This one here, the blood didn't run out, but tr trust me, it's dense in here. Well, that's it. He pulled the, well, just trust me, bro. You can't argue against that. You see that? You say, oh, that's a rock. No, it isn't. That's a bone. That is a bone, and it had blood coming out of there. Roger, you know that rocks can trap water in them, right? So what you're seeing is water, not blood. You would almost think that he's a vampire, given how much he's obsessing over blood. You want to see? <laughs> There's blood. That's a scab from blood from out coming out of one of these born bone foramen. Now, that looks far more like a crystal rather than a scab. But congratulations for actually finding something that kind of looks like the thing that you're saying that it looked like for once. This is a problem. I don't think Dan has much ability in science to be perfectly honest with you. I think he maybe reads a lot of stuff and says what they tell him to say and he thinks he's pretty well covered in things. I mean, yeah, because I do write half his scripts, I can't get him to say what I want him to say. So good job on that, Rod. Wait, you're not meant to know that. But Simon Dan actually does know a fair amount. In fact, I have learned stuff myself from Simon Dan. Does he get things wrong from time to time? Yes, he does, as we all do. But Simon Dan will always correct himself if he gets something wrong. Let's talk, Dan. I mean, if you have an open mind, let's discuss it. That's all. I'm not saying you have to agree with me about my friend Caesar here and his feathers. You can disagree with anything you want. Okay, in that case, as one of Dan's handlers, I authorize Dan to be able to have a conversation with Roger. Jokes aside though, it's interesting how some of the things that Jake and Roger were saying were both similar to one another. Obviously Jake was making a far stronger claim by saying that Dan has handlers, but they were both saying conspiracy-minded stuff. Sometimes it feels like the only real difference between flat earthers and other conspiracy theorists is that flat earthers will take it to the extreme. But anyway, I think this is a good place to end it, so leave a like and subscribe if you liked this video. Be sure to join us tomorrow for the last video in the series, which has been highly anticipated, so you do not want to miss it. When you watch it, you'll completely understand why this was counting down and not counting up. As always, a big shout out to my $20 or more patrons, Hugh Jars, MC Nutkin, Shaki, Jet Alone, Nathaniel Muller, Vermont1777, Wolfie, Mori, Graymall Ghost, Kid Vicious, Sarcha Campbell, Kitten McKitten from Kitten Town, Craig D'Amelio, Nerthan Thompson, and Richard M. Chapman. If you want to support me financially, you can do so on Patreon, there should be a link there. But anyway, I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching.